Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, this is Rocky Marciano Stadium, home of the Brockton Boxers. And today, the tests continue for the Boxers. Not only are the three and one Severian Hawks in town, but they're playing without their starting quarterback, their starting running back, and their top wideout. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside Miles Jackson. Big game. There's a lot of boxers missing from the lineup tonight. We'll get into that a little bit later. What do the boxers have to do to keep it going against the Severian Hawks? Well, the first thing they have to do, they have to execute. Second thing, they cannot make dumb penalties. Because last week against BC, they made some big plays, but they had to come back because of penalties. They cannot, especially where they're, they're missing a lot of their offense. So they're going to have to play play tight football, focus football, and, and just subside on the penalties. Speaking of dumb penalties, there are a number of boxers out tonight. Due to something stupid that occurred off the field, David Belsius, Amik Watterson, and Sten Bruno all out tonight due to disciplinary reasons. Michael Norman, the starting quarterback, Isaiah Laguerre, and Derek Williams all injured. And so it is the sophomore quarterback, Devontae Medley, starting for the boxers, and he immediately completes a pass for a first down across the 50 and onto the Severian side of the field. Yeah, and as you say, uh, there's a few players that um, went against team rules, and the thing that they have to think about is you're on a team. So all that does is hurt your team, especially if, if you're a starter. So you got to think about before you do that or whatever they did, you must think, is this going to affect the team? First and 10 boxers from the Severian 47-yard line. Medley in the gun. We're told that he runs a heck of an option play. And he's taken down seven yards behind the line of scrimmage as he is sacked by the big defensive line of the Severian Hawks. Yeah, that, that pocket collapsed very quickly for uh, the quarterback, Medley. You'll see it here. Stays right in the pocket, looks at somebody, but before you know it, it's, it's closed and shut down. That was big number 72 on the sack for the Hawks. That is Lucas Ferraro, the senior 6'2", 285 captain, as it is now second and 16. Trips to the near side. Medley in the gun. Drops back to pass. Now he's going to keep it himself. Across the line of scrimmage, back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be a third and about nine. Yeah, he couldn't find anybody open. So he went straight up the middle. Medley, just a sophomore, he weighs in at 5'10 and a buck 70. As Brockton's yeah. gonna call their first time out, an undersized quarterback in a big test right now. Yeah, exactly, a tough time to come in starting a football game for the boxers when you're going up against powerhouse like Zaverian. So he's gonna get a rude, uh, he's already had a rude um, introduction, being sacked already for one time. Didn't make a nice pass, play little, it was a great catch by the receiver, cause it was short. But um, Medley has his hands full this evening, Matt. Well, let's go back to last week against the BC High Eagles, Miles. The scoring summary, not much. 21 to 13 loss against the Eagles. Isaiah Laguerre had a 49 yard touchdown pass. He's hurt tonight. Michael Norman, starting quarterback, he's out. Carlin's Gene, the kicker, is in tonight. Amik Watterson had a two yard touchdown run and he is one of the suspended starters for the boxers. So that just means whoever is filling in, they're gonna have to step up, focus really hard and do the best that they can out there. Just give it, give it 100%. Medley looking over the middle, flag thrown in. It's going to fall incomplete, intended for Navon Reed, but a flag thrown in from the secondary. And that was like a low block on the, um, the referee called blocking below the knees, I believe. Let's 
hard to see where the penalty happened, but. Bring up fourth and a long nine for the boxers, and they're gonna send out their punting unit. Sten Bruno, the punter, is also one of the suspended boxers. So Carlin's Jean is taking over punting duties for the boxers tonight. High snap, he has to backtrack and find this one in midair and his short high kick is fair caught at the 22 yard line. And that's where the Severian Hawks will start. Yeah, that was not a good snap, but uh, Carlin's Jean stayed cool back there and got off a decent kick. Be interesting to see how the Hawks use their plethora of quarterbacks. There are five of them on the roster. Wow. So who will get the nod first? Ball snap, the end around give. Plowing ahead a gain of about seven. The starting quarterback is number eight, Michael Berluti, a sophomore at 5'10 and 145 pounds. Box is going to have to do a better job with the running game, defensive running game this time around than last week. BC was able to run all over um, the boxes. Justin Wenstrom on that first carry as this one is stopped at the line of scrimmage falling forward for maybe a yard. Yeah, nice play by one of the boxes. It was a shoestring shoe tackle. Went down by the ankles. You'll see it here. Nice job right there. He went low down by the knees. Just That's below. Maybe. Mike Saliba, the senior captain. Stack of the box, every man on the line. And Severian is going to have enough for a first down. It's Mike Massey, the senior fullback. Yeah, and Box got to watch out for him. He's a big time fullback for Zavarian. Always been a thorn in the side for uh, the boxes when they play Zavarian. So they got to watch out for number 44. Six foot, 230 pounds. He's a big kid. A freight train busting through the defensive line. Berluti under center, drops back to pass. Short screen is dropped. It'll be second and 10 for the Hawks. Miles, you figure if the defense can work out the kinks from last week, we'll save the offensive discussion for later on. We're looking at a whole different team on that side of the ball. Well, the, the key, you're right, the key to this game is the defense. The defense needs to stand tall and hold Zavarian down to as least points as possible because we know the offense will struggle this evening with your uh, second string quarterback in there. It'll be a third down at about 11 for the Hawks, so a good defensive stand so far on this drive for the Boxers, who are wearing their brand new camouflage jerseys. You know, I, I like them, they're really sharp. Yeah, we're gonna have a timeout called by Severian. Severian. 6.34 left to go in the first quarter. We are still knotted at zero. Boxers came into last week's game with a two week layoff after going, starting two and zero oh against Lexington and Natick. Yeah, I believe Matt did. that that layoff really kind of hurt the boxers. They really weren't crisp on the offensive end and not, not really that crisp on the defensive end. That one week really kind of hurt them. 
That's Berluti rolling to the near sideline. He chucks it over to number 88, who is brought down after a gain of about six. The defense holds. Trevor Carroll, the tight end on the reception. You can see right here, good coverage. Number 33 there. Goodwin did not let his, stayed right with the tight end. So Brockton will get the ball back. Fourth and about four to go for the Hawks. Long four, we'll call it five. In punting formation. A high spinning kick will fall short. It falls at the 37, takes a good Severian bounce all the way back to the 20 two-ish yard line, and that is where we'll have the second look of the night at Medley. Tell you, Matt, it's very interesting, Brockton's offense, that first time out there. They did a lot of passing. Um, they didn't do much running. We'll see what happens this time around. They didn't have a lot of luck with the pass. They did have one completion. Again, great catch by the receiver, but besides that, they didn't do much. Scanning the roster, I mean, you've got a Johnny Horn who is the lone man behind Medley. Other than that, your top two running backs are off the field tonight. And Derek Williams, who had that phenomenal week one against Lexington, 174 yards, four touchdowns. And then Amik Watterson, who had a phenomenal game against Natick and got the majority of carries oh, against right. BC High. Yeah, what you have out this evening for the boxes is, is game changer type players. Players that can change the game at any moment, any time on the field. So, again, everybody's going to have to step up and try a little bit harder and try to keep the ball away from um, Zavarian's offense. Medley under center. The give to Horn right up the middle. He is stopped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and 15. Yeah, that, that hole collapsed very quickly. Matter of fact, it collapsed by the time Horn got to the line of scrimmage. Five minutes even to go in the first quarter. Brockton trying to dig himself out of a hole. Three receiver set. Medley passing complete. As Navon Reed on the far sideline. And it'll be a third and a long six to go for the boxers. Yeah, nice execution by the boxers. Still got a little ways to go. Say about six yards for a first. Where well, we got third down. The quick pass off the play action right there. Right. It's it almost was. as if Medley didn't even look where he was throwing it. He knew where Navon Reed was. And just as released, just as he released it, he was hit. Green pass, depending on the spot, will be close to a first down for Ted Tessa. And they are going to give him the first down. That's enough for a box here. First down. Nice job by Medley to find the receiver. And the receiver made the extra effort to get to that first down marker. Trips to the far side, Medley in the gun, two receivers to the near side. Weird formation on first down is, oh my God, what a grab! By Tejon Glenn, Glenn Darty on the near side. He's across the 50 into Severian territory. You're exactly right, what a grab. Quarterback just threw it down there where he was at, and it was up to Tejon to go up there and grab that football 
Very nice play. Kept his balance and got a few more yards on the play. Got the crowd on their feet. Played week one, hurt weeks two and technically four. So this is his first game action in a while. The starting center of the Boxer men's basketball team. The Boxer sticking with what worked. Five receivers with trips to the far side. Medley in the shotgun. Coming in with a blitz. Heads up. And Medley is not brought down, but his forward progress is stopped. So yeah. it'll be a loss of about five. Yeah, the defense called the blitz there. Everybody came in and uh, it worked. Loss of about five or six yards on the play. See everybody coming in there. At least seven Zaverian players came through that line. These guys are the, just dwarfed Medley. He's 5'10", I think the smallest lineman is 6'3", for the Zaverian Hawks. Second and 16. Medley pitch out to a Johnny Horn who cuts back to the inside. It'll be third and about 10. Nice little pitch out by the quarterback. Caught the running back in stride, so he was able to get back to the uh, line of scrimmage. Makes it uh, third down and about 11. See right here, nice little pitch. Running back did not have to wait for the football. Medley keeping himself, he is hit and it'll be no gain, fourth and 10. Interesting decision coming up here for the boxers. It's that wonderful gray area we always talk about. Too short to punt and I think too long for a field goal. It would be about a 50 yard attempt for Carlin's Gene. I'll tell you, on this offensive drive, the boxers have done a good job running out the clock or using the clock. We've only got 50 seconds and counting left in this first quarter. And when they first re uh, got the football, there was about six minutes left in this uh, first quarter. So good job of um, operating the clock, using the clock. Boxers lined up to go for it here. Four receivers, two split out to each side. Medley gets the snap. Screen pass to Glenn Darty. Spins off the initial hit, and then he's wrapped up. Reaching ahead, and it'll be a turnover on down. Severian takes over at the 34-yard line. Yeah, we got 25 seconds left. This Zaverian is right on top of this play. Right now, if you want to give it to somebody or throw it to somebody, that's who you want to throw it to. Darty Glenn. And you did say Tayshawn. That name sounds very familiar. Basketball? Starting center. That's right. Why not at 6'4", 220, the senior for Brockton High. For Ludi under center. Screen pass is complete to number 22, who's brought down after a gain of about three. And that is... Justin Wenstrom. Yeah, quick delivery over there to uh, Winston. You can see that quick pass right out there. Clock has hit zeros at the end of the first quarter. We are still knotted at zero apiece. Severian with the ball. Both teams, Miles. Kind of a feeling outstage. Brockton, I think, are trying to figure out who they are tonight. It, well, that's exactly right with a lot of uh, substitutions in it. They're trying to f find their way on offense. And um, the defense is doing a pretty good job with Zavarian at the moment. Set. No, I'm all set. I got one. So... 
Miles, I honestly didn't think we'd be saying it's 0-0 at the end of the first quarter between the high-powered Severian Hawks and a team we haven't seen before led by Devontae Medley. Yeah, I'm pleasantly, pleasantly surprised that Zavarian didn't put any points in their first quarter. Um, when I got here and found out what Brockton was going to be working with, I'm just glad the defense stood tall and um, hopefully Brockton can um, pull out a few big plays during this football game. And the Brockton defense, hopefully they can hold. Severian with the ball at their own 38 yard line. Berluti hands it off and stopped immediately is number five, Mike Saliba. Third and about five to go for the Severian Hawks. Trip to the near side, Berluti in the shotgun. Dropping back to pass under heavy pressure, he's complete. And wrapped up from behind nicely is number 27. That's Thomas Garland, the sophomore. Yeah, that was a nice job there, um, Brockton reading the... Um, Fourth down. The screen, screen pass. And there you got number 45 making the play. So big third down here because Severian only got about four yards to get a first. Offside on Brockton. Oh. So it'll be offside, so free first down for the Hawks. See, that was a big play by Brockton's defense, and it's, it's wiped off the books because of a mental error it's out there. Play. And this is the thing that Brockton cannot do this evening against this Zavarian team. They've got to play solid football mentally. Now Brockton calling for something. It's a timeout called by the Hawks. And we've got 10.06. Left in this third quarter, Mad Dog, and still no score. I think Severian had lined up with 12 guys on the field. One of Brockton's cornerbacks started jumping up and down. Brockton might have been better off if he didn't do that. Because then Severian wouldn't have realized what was happening and called the timeout. Give to number, number 25. 25. That's Luke Thorban, the sophomore. So last week for the Brockton offense, only six first downs. Yeah, they, they just wasn't clicking last week. Again, with that uh, week off before, it just they just wasn't running smoothly like they did in that second game of the season. Thorbon hit at the line of scrimmage, but a flag thrown in. Flag on the play. It'll be third and about eight. And it looks like Brockton's gonna decline the penalty. Yeah, you can see number 64 looked like he just tackled number seven there. And you can't do that. I'm going to call a false start. But Brockton's going to decline to bring up a third and long. Yeah, I think that's a smart move right there by Coach Colombo and his staff to uh, just keep it at third down. They've been doing a pretty good job holding this Zavarian offensive team, force them into a fourth down and punting situation. Defense, 
Third and about eight trips to the near side. Faludi in the gun, screen pass complete to Thorbon. He's hit and brought down for a two yard loss. Well, interesting play. He received the football, but then he started running backwards. Well, that was Wenstrom on the reception for the Hawks. It'll be fourth and 10. Back to receive is number 12, Devin Forts. Devin Forts back to receive the Severian kick. Gotta watch it here, the starting quarterbacks lined up as the punter, Michael Berluti. Ball is snapped, he does indeed kick it high and short, falling at the 36 and bouncing back in Brockton's direction. Mad Dog, I'm going into my memory bank. Tayshawn, number 13, the wide receiver. Is he the one that has the uh, long hair on the basketball team. Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. Now I know who we're talking about. Also remembered for a 49 and a half yard reception in a playoff game against Needham, where he was brought down just shy of the goal line and yes. would have given Brockton the win. First and 10 for Devontae Medley and the Boxers. I formation, split receivers to each side. Medley still got it some room if he can get around. He is not able to do so, it'll be second and about eight. Well, I'll tell you what, that play fooled me. That was a nice disguise, it just didn't fool um, Everett. I'm, excuse me, Jan Severian. Right there. High formation for the boxers. The give to the big man who cradles it. That's number five. Jamil Atkinson, six foot two twenty. Big kid, and he showed his uh, toughness right there. Bowling his way forward. It's a big third down for the Brockton offense. They really need to try to uh, execute on this and get a first down and continue using this clock. 640 left in this second quarter. Third and uh, about three to go for the boxers. The lone man wide is number 81, Adamola Filet. Medley back to pass under pressure. He's going to fall incomplete. Intended for number 87, Malik Kernan. I like the call. They just couldn't quite execute the play. It didn't really fool Zavarian. There was somebody there, but um, it could have been completed. Brockton lines up to punt. Carlin's Gene, a short punt on his first attempt. It's number 23 back to return the kick, Connor Garland. Good snap. High spiraling kick falling and almost falling dead. Brockton will touch it down at the 28 yard line. And that's where Michael Berluti will have his next opportunity. So the defense comes back out on the field for Brockton. They just gotta continue to focus like they've been doing so far. It seems as though, Miles, this is gonna be the kind of game where whichever defense makes the first mistake. You're right. Um, either the defense makes a mistake or the offense. Big week in sports across New England. Last night, the Patriots 
flattening the Colts. More on that in a moment. Berluti play action. Chucks one up to nobody in particular. No, sidelines. American League Divisional Series kicking off tonight. The Yankees and Red Sox. In a stat I did not realize before I heard it on the radio today. This is the first time the Sox and Yankees have met in the playoff series since 2004. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a long time, 14 years to be exact. And lest we forget what happened when the Yankees blew a three nothing lead in the championship series that year. That was a beautiful series. Berluti back to pass, looking long. He's got a man and right through his hands, a diving athletic attempt for number 88, Trevor Carroll. Yeah, it was good coverage there by number 12 for the um, boxes. Fortes, just out of the outstretched hands of the wide receiver for Zavaria. So big third down for the boxer defense. They want to have their offense get back on the field with uh, five minutes and 51 seconds left in the second quarter. Give them a chance to try to do something. Ooh. Five receivers set for the Hawks the first time tonight we've seen this formation. Berluti in the shotgun. Long and deep to the near sideline and about three and yards ahead. It's a flag on the play, um, Matt. We have a flag on the play. Motion. Brockton again declining the penalty. This will bring up a fourth and 10. So the Brockton defense stands tall and is getting ready to give the ball back to the offense of Brockton High. And number 26 had uh, his defender beat a little bit there. Cooper DeVoe, the intended receiver for the Hawks. And Wunodi covering out there, one of the linebackers. Ball is snapped, Devin Fortes back to return the kick if given the opportunity. Woo. And he's gonna call for a fair catch as breathing down his throat was Jojo Marinella. That was a nice catch because he was moving backwards and still hung onto the football with a Zavarian player almost in his face. So nice job by Fortes, Devin Fortes. Five thirty-six to go in the first half. Brockton with the ball, and the way the first couple drives have gone, they should have it for the majority of the remainder of the first half. Slow developing play. Medley with some room, and he's going to bomb it over the head of Navon Reed. Yeah, Reed should have just kept going on the fly pattern. Rather he kind of Adamola Filet. Yeah, Filet. He just slowed up for some reason. If he would have just ran straight down the field, that possibly he could have caught that football. And I think the coach is letting them know. Look, just run the fly pattern straight down the field, and the ball just might be there for you. Medley hands off to a Johnny Horn as a gain of about six. Yeah, nice run by Horn. Third down. Third and about five for the boxers. Five minutes even to go in the first half. The 
lines shift, and we're going to have a timeout called by Brockton. Timeout, Brockton. So the Patriots getting back on track, two wins in four days. I think the, the worst part of that game for me as a fan who grew up in the early 2000s, oh, yeah. was Adam Vinatieri plunking the kick off of the left upright. Uh, th that was beautiful. That was beautiful. It was beautiful in a way that, yes, they yeah. didn't score against the Patriots. Right, right. But for a guy who's made so many important kicks through those uprights. Holds a lot of records. Holds a lot of records. Man, he ain't. I'm sure some people out there that went their way as Those far as the points on the folks, yeah. yeah that helped a few folks. I might even know one. You might even know one. There might be one in a truck about 50 foot under us with a big grin on his face. Third and five for the boxers. Clean for receivers. Medley under center. Horn and Atkinson, the two running backs. The pitch to a Johnny Horn. Trying Ooh. to turn the corner, he is hit and brought down at the 37 yard line and that'll fall about three yards shy of a first down. Yeah, Zavarian read that sweep excellently. Came right over and charged in. Maybe a, a yard on the play. You'll see it here on the, de on the uh, replay. You'll see the defense go right to their left. Bringing a big hit. Fourth and about three to go for the boxers. Four minutes to go in the second quarter. Rockin looks like they're gonna line up and go for it here. Timeout called by Brockton as the play clock had run down. So now they bring in the punting team. I was going to say that was going to be a, it's a pretty um, gutsy move if they were actually going to try and um, go for it, but I think they were just posturing. Carlin's Jean, a beautiful kick. Good kick, all the way back to the 20. Yeah. And a flag thrown down. And oh, -ho! what a hit. What a hit, but it's, it's going to come it's back. It's going back because Final there was one. an illegal block in the back against Severian. So it'll go back to around the 20 or so yard line. There's the illegal block. Boom, number 51. Steve Vo, senior 230. I'll give you a little trivia. Number 51, can you name the Hall of Fame linebacker for the Chicago Bears back in the 60s and 70s, early 70s? He's a, he's a Hall of Famer, Matt. Chicago Bears, let me give you another hint. He's one of the original light beer um, athletes on the commercials for light beer when it first came out. I got See, nothing. Uh, showing your age. Showing your age. Dick Buckus. Dick Buckus. Hall of Fame. He was, he was, when I was growing up, all the kids wanted to be Dick Buckus out there when they played defense. Speaking of the Bears, top of the NFC North. Hey. Gain of about four. Oh, so far this has really been a defensive battle, Mad Dog. I'm gonna stick defense. with the statement: wh whichever defense makes the first mistake. Or whichever defense makes the big play, cause the turnover. And to clarify, there is a difference between giving a little wiggle room and making a mistake. 
you let Severian get a few first downs like they have, that's not necessarily a mistake. No. Third down and short. Third and a long three, we'll call it three and a half for the Severian Hawks. And Severian's got a first down run courtesy of Mike Saliba. With 2.05 on the clock here in this second quarter. Clock stopped so the chains can move now. It's running again, under two minutes to go. They give to number 25, Luke Thorbond. <laughs> Got a gain of about a yard. Fox has got to be on their toes here. It's very possibly could be setting up for a pass. back to pass long over the middle that that should be grounding <laughs> there well, was no well big no number 44 player. was heading that way which is way past yeah, he was heading that that way but the pass was thrown 20 yards over his head well Brockton was ready like I said they possibly could have been setting setting him up for a pass let's see if uh, he's got time there in the pocket too much time and he just totally, you're right. That, that was ball about, landed yes, 15, 15 yards, yards past where Mike Massey was. We got third down. Screen pass complete to Cooper DeVoe. He's brought down at the 35 yard line. It'll be fourth and about two. And we've got 40 seconds in running. And 41, and so the timeout. Boxes want to get the ball back. Well, this is where it hurts the boxes, where they don't have those blue chippers back there, those game breakers to make a play back there, not taking anything away from number 12, Fortes, but it sure would help. And yeah, I'm shocked, Miles, that the defense has been so good without their captain at cornerback, David Belsius. Yeah, they obviously they banded together for this game. Probably talk to each other, defensive coach talk to them, and let them know y'all have got to work as a team out here, even though you don't have your leader out here. Belsius, one of the folks suspended for two games. I formation. Brockton's not going to jump, so Severian will take a timeout. And they will line up to punt the ball away with 41 seconds to go. Yeah, good job, Brockton, staying patient at the line. Michael Berluti back to kick. It's Forts back to receive for the boxers. High knuckleball takes a big Severian bounce and 
They'll touch it down at the 11 yard line. Brockton should just take a knee here and head to the locker room. Yeah, exactly right. Deep in their own territory. They don't want to take any chances. With the defensive battle and the, the two teams, the way the defenses have played tonight, I, I don't even think I'd take a couple of shots at the end zone. Yes. Devontae Medley getting the marching orders. Coach gonna be happy. Two running backs, Adamola Filet, the lone wide out to the far side. Quarterback keeper for Medley. He is stopped. And that should do it for the half. 10 seconds to go. And Nothing too out of the have. ordinary for no the final score. play. At the end of the first half, here's something I didn't think I'd be saying tonight. It's Severian zero and Brockton zero. You know, I can't remember a time when it was zip zip at the halftime of the Zavarian Hawks going up against the Brockton Boxers. It's going to be a victory for Brockton. Definitely a victory for Brockton coming in here shorthanded with some of their starters out. Definitely a big time victory. Defense has to feel good about standing tall and holding up against these uh, Zavarian Hawks. It's 0 0 at halftime. The Zavarian Hawks and the Brockton Boxers in a defensive showdown here at Marciano Stadium. We're going to step aside, take a listen to the Brockton High School Marching Band's halftime show and bring you second half action right after this. All right, everyone, check your tickets. We got the number for the 50-50. Your winner, 408165. 408165. 165 at the end. If you have it, please come up to the press box. Thank you.
Awkward. Do I look familiar? I should. You might remember me from here. Here. We never know. Or maybe even here. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. It can actually be a perfect moment to reach out to a friend and ask if they're okay, if they seem down. It doesn't matter how you say it. You all right? Everything's okay? All G. You all right, girl? Oh, you cool? You bug and dog. Just show you're there for them. Go on, Kelly. It's easy, awkward. Hey, um... You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into Rocky Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Severian Hawks and your Brockton Boxers. In a statement, again, I did not think I would hear myself say tonight, we are knotted at goose eggs yeah, we're gonna coming a, into the second half. Yes, it was a defensive battle in the first half. I don't see much changing in the second half. It'll be a defensive battle. It's whoever makes the big play or makes the least mistakes that will come out on top. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game Miles Jackson. A game in which six Brockton starters are out. Led by Michael Norman, the quarterback. He's hurt along with their number one receiver, Isaiah Laguerre. Yeah, that was a big big 11 yard run right there for uh, the running back, number five. Derek Williams, who had 174 yards and four touchdowns week one, also injured tonight. Must have happened in practice because the coaching staff of Brockton hasn't given him much workload the last couple of games. In fact, four total carries after that tremendous week one performance. Mike, Mike Sally by again with the carry. This time Brockton was able to stop him just for a two yard game. Other boxers out tonight, David Belsius, Amik Watterson and Sten Bruno all suspended. I mean, those are names that we constantly mention up here in the booth for the boxes, so. Watterson's been the starting running back for the Natick game, the BC High game, and presumably would have been for this game as well as another 11-yard run for Severian, and they are moving the chains early in the second half. Yeah, that offensive line for Severian has opened up a couple of big holes for uh, the running back there, Salab Salaba, you'll see it right here, big hole. Just cuts right up through there. Nice tackle there by number 12, Devin Fortes. Mike Saliba, senior six foot, 205 pounder. It's the carry again, this time he's stacked up after a gain of about two and a half. Be second and about seven. Well, it's just a reminder we don't we don't want spectators sitting on the uh, sideline fences. Please come up to the stands. So second and seven for the Severian Hawks. Two wideouts to the far sideline. Quarterback keeper. Or a direct snap to the fullback, number 44, and he's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Severian. That is Mike Massey, the senior fullback, six foot, 230 pounder, breaking the uh, goose egg for Severian. Yeah, Severian, that was just power football right there for Severian. 
going right up the field. You'll see it right here. Just power football right up the middle. Big, strong, fullback. Players bouncing off of him, and he just takes it to the house. In the men's bathroom to a Jeep. Mike Massey, a senior, showing his leadership right there. The extra point is up and good. Seven to nothing, Severian. So it's seven nothing, Severian. Brockton about to get the ball for the first time in this second half. Severian winning the opening coin toss and deferring. We also have an Audi in the park. Yeah, I think Severian's offensive line surprised Brockton's defensive line because that's the first time Brockton's defensive line has been pushed around here in this football game. And it paid off with uh, seven points for Zavarian. So next week, the boxers are down at Durfee High School in Fall River. Other than being cold, that game famous for being an absolute blowout. Except for the year Brockton let Durfee come back from 34 points down. And it is a botched uh, reception. And it'll be Brockton ball because the ball went, went out, out of, of bounds. bounds. Yes, lucky break for the boxes right there. Severian couldn't have played that any more perfectly. Brockton will stop from their own 27 yard line, first down. First and 10 from the 27, Brockton looking to even it up after Severian on their opening drive of the second half. Took it to the house, Mike Massey. <laughs> about a 35 yard touchdown run. A pitch out and some room to run for a Johnny Horn across the 40 to the 45 to the 49 yard line. And that play developed well, but the quarterback, Devontae Medley came up a little bit slow. Yeah, I think he was plummeted after he let that football go. But a nice big gain by the boxes. Give him a little momentum. Give that offense a little momentum. They're going to say he wasn't down until the 49-yard line of Severian. So a generous spot. Medley gives it off to Horn again. He's going to gain of about one before being thrown back about six yards. So it'll be a second and nine. Men, check your pockets. We have a juke. They were found, it says 24 on the group and planted fitness on them. So check to see if you have lost your keys. We have your car keys up in the press box. Sprockton then entering division play after this week. Next week at Durfee, seven o'clock kickoff for that one. We'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. The following week, right back here at Marciano Stadium as the New Bedford Whalers come to town. So you win those two games, you are you get the automatic berth into the playoffs. It'll be a lot more interesting next year because the old Colony League and the big three are talking about merging. So that would put us in the same division as bridgewater Raynham. And that whole league, with the exception of Barnstable, who decided they don't want to travel to Brockton twice a year in every sport. Understandable. Barnstable's way down there in the Cape. I remember taking a ride down there. I was like, gee, are we ever going to get there? Over the river, through, through the, the woods. 
almost intercepted as... Went right through his hands, he should have had it. Medley tried throwing it straight to Jojo Marinella. It's a good football name. Jojo Marinella, yes. I tell you, if uh, Severian could have, Marinella, Marinella could have held on to that. That was going somewhere the opposite direction. So uh, you'll see it right here. Just a bad pass. Look at that. He kind of slipped just as the ball got to him. Still no excuse. Should have been in. Gene high end over in. Punt touchdown at the 25 yard line. Brockton saying Severian touched it, so it should be a Brockton ball. The Brockton sideline signaling the same thing, and the refs do not agree. Oh, gee, I'd like to see that on replay. That was close. Let's take a look. Nope, I guess it, it was it, close. It might have touched number 13's legs. Yeah, possibly, but the refs are not going to give it to him. Let's see it again. See, right when he spins. See, the number right seven's in our way. Is what the boxers are saying. It touched number 13's legs. There's not enough there to yeah. give up a possession that deep as Thorbon is stopped at the line of scrimmage, second and 10. Six oh five left in this third quarter. Long drives, Miles, to start this game, with the exception of the the opening drive of the second half that Severian took it to the house. Every drive has been five plus minutes. Exactly. Two wideouts to the far side, clean on the near side. Berluti on the quarterback keeper diving ahead. It'll be just shy of the first down. It'll be third and one. See, Berluti, he cut right up at the exact time he should have to get that extra yard close to a first down. Not quite, but a nice, nice play by the quarterback for Zavarian. You'll see it right here. He cuts up field at the exact moment. Gain an extra couple of yards. Third and one. Flag thrown in. It's getting quite nippy out here, Miles. It's 51 degrees. Yeah, well, we're, Slight breeze. It is in October. We're in New England. And yet, it will be 64 degrees on Christmas. <laughs> well, Brockton gets a break right there. It was uh, motion. Zavarian was in motion, so that's a five-yard penalty. You'll notice some players wearing pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Cheerleaders have pink pom-poms, pom -poms. Yep. see socks, towels, gloves, mouthpieces. Almost picked off by the boxers. Massey wasn't able to handle it. So I think the coolest display of breast cancer awareness comes from the Massachusetts State Police who painted an entire cruiser an entire SUV, bright pink, and put a ribbon on the hood. Wow. Well, you know, they, they're behind for um, breast cancer awareness. See that tipped up by the uh, tight end. A high end over end kick, but yet short, falling at the 43. Another big Severian bounce as the whistles blow immediately.
So the state police cruiser is wild. Two shades of pink. You get the state police logo nice. with a ribbon behind it. Another big one on the hood. Nice. You can see it on their Facebook page, Massachusetts State Police. Here's a shot to the near sideline intended for Navon Reed who got tangled up. Yeah, that was good coverage by 23. He stayed in front of the receiver. Receiver couldn't quite get to the football. Just good coverage by Zavarian's backfield there. Second and 10 for the boxers. 405 left in the third quarter. You see number 88 split out there and right there just the defender stayed in between the football and the um, receiver. Good play. Now the pitch. Gate of about two for a Johnny Horn. You can see the man in motion, pitches out. He cuts back in for a couple. It's gonna be third in about six for the boxers. A high pitch and a gain of about two for the boxers. It went eventually to Denilson Da Silva. Yeah, that was, um, you held your breath there when he pitched it up high. So it'll be fourth down. What do the boxers do? That's the smart thing to do is uh, punt that football. Crohn's Gene bobbles it, low knuckleball. Bouncing Ooh. all the way down to the 15, all the way down to 11. the 11 yard line. Beautiful punt. It was a line drive type of punt. Especially considering he bobbled it. Puts uh, Zavarian deep in their own territory. With 226 left in this third quarter. A defensive battle, but Zaveri was able to take that ball in the second half and march down the field running the football. You give it to a 230-pound fullback. Uh, I don't know what hopes you have of stopping him. Gee, I don't know what they're feeding these uh, Catholic school um there was some big boys. boys on BC High last week. Last 285. Week, yeah. Big boys. I think boys. we got a 300. Yes. Baluti on the keeper. Gain of about four. Uh, that was Mike Massey, the fullback, plowing up the middle. Give to Massey again, and he's got another gain of about four. It'll be third and two. Third down and short. Be nice to see the boxers hold on this one. Yeah. 
Zaverian might come out with a very tight formation and just ram it down, uh, try to ram it down the boxer's throat. Got, got to give it to Massey here, the senior fullback, six foot, 230 pounds. If nothing else, he can just plow it right ahead. Yeah, he's been a thorn in uh, the boxer's side for the, at least the past two or three years. Well, the Hawks go clean backfield. Now an end around give. Yeah, you have enough for a first down. It's number 26, Cooper DeVoe. Yeah, he did a nice job of doing some juke moves, shake and bake to get that first down. Fool the defense. Two wideouts to the far side, clean on the near side. Another first down give, this one to Mike Saliba. And he gets to the 48. Yeah, the seniors have been really, had some great runs in this second half. Twenty-three seconds to go in the third quarter. It is seven to nothing, Severian, and it looks like they're going to let the clock run out on the third quarter. So it'll be a one touchdown game going into the final frame, Miles. Yeah, and the defense really needs to to um, suck it up and try to hold this Severian offense because right now they're feeling it a little bit, End especially the in the running game. Boxes need to stand tall and. Push back. So next week you go down to Durfee. The boxers can't necessarily write that one off because the three starters that are suspended are also out for that game. And then you've got New Bedford who has started to come into their own against the boxers the last couple years. They've kept it fairly close. You get through those two games, and you win the division. If not, the division won't officially be won until Durfee or New Bedford wins against each other on Thanksgiving, after the playoffs have taken place. But the biggest football game next week by far, Kansas City and the New England Patriots. Oh, that's gonna be a beauty. It's Tom Brady versus Kermit the Frog. If you've seen any of Patrick Mahomes' press conferences, his voice sounds like Kermit the Frog. Really? I'm gonna have to listen up. Yeah, he's definitely got an arm on him. He's the real deal. I'd like to, to see him get like more than three or four games before analysts and Tony Romo start calling him the greatest <laughs> rookie quarterback in the history of the NFL. <laughs> 13 touchdowns is nice, but when you're throwing to Travis Kelsey, Sammy Watkins, Kareem Hunt, Tariq Hill, he's got a stacked, stacked offense. Yep, that always helps a quarterback. The semi annual make noise for insert your house well, color here. It, it sounds like Azure won the battle, but I, I'm pulling for yellow. 
<laughs> We're begging for a recount. Nine minutes and a little bit of change left in the fourth quarter. Severian with the ball and it's gonna turn into full clock management mode, long drives. Boy, Massey's really doing a job. Offense gives him a hole and he takes advantage and just bulls his way through. Look at this. Just powers his way through for a first down. That is senior co-captain Mike Saliba, six foot, 205 pounds. Yeah, he's showing his leadership. We got 837 and counting. Saliba again, this time trying to turn the corner on the outside. Unsuccessful in that effort. He has a gain of about three. It'll be second and seven. Yep, Salima's been the meat and potatoes for this Hawk offense. Severian has... Another long drive shaping up. Long in terms of time bled off the clock. There's Thorbon. He's stopped after a gain of about a yard. All right, now this is a big third down situation for the boxer defense. They must hold. And the, the, the tuba section have gone rogue in the boxer marching band. They've joined the cheerleaders on the track to play one note on third down. Well, here we go. They're in about six yards to go for a first down. Timeout called by Brockton. Brockton. Yeah, coaches know this is a big third down. Their defense must hold. And, and the, the best scenario is for one of the best, second best scenario would be for boxes to. Um... Someone get a shot of these tubas. <laughs> They're spinning around. That can't be healthy. That was that was the most athletic thing I think I've seen here at Marciano Stadium. I tell you, we've got the best marching band on the East Coast. Standing in for Belsius tonight. Uh, defensive captain Trevon Cordaro Goodwin, senior linebacker. Ludi throws it out of bounds. Incomplete It'll fall incomplete. So, what, what's the variant going to do now, Mad Dog? Fourth and about six. A little play action right there. I'm not sure how good their kicker is. It is, it would be about a 35, about a 40 yard kick, so it's doable. Severian lining up to go for it. Of course, if the boxers jump off sides, it's a free first down. They give it to Massey. Ooh, nice, nice defensive stand right there by the boxes. With 6.59 on the clock. You see Turnover on downs for the boxers is it was Saliba and Mike Saliba is hurt. You can see him hobbling yes. over to the sideline. Yes. The only bad part about that for Brockton is that they've got a 230 pound fullback right behind him in uh, Mike Massey. <laughs> yes. Four receivers, Medley back to pass, it's tipped and it falls incomplete. I like the play call, it just couldn't quite execute it. You'll see right here on the replay. 
He even gave it a little loop up there, but the defensive player made a great play getting his hands up to bat that ball down. And that's what you want to do if you're a defensive lineman. If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. D-line shifts for Severian. Ball is snapped. Medley looking to pass. Throws it long. And that's... Oh, where's the that flag? Pass where's the flag? Oh. That is where's defensive the flag? pass interference if I've ever seen it. Oh, my God. Brockton cannot get a break. Let's see here on the replay. They're looking near sideline. Right there right is there. the interference. He's pulling him. Oh. Oh, the referees just missed that one. Didn't want to throw the flag. Adam Olafale, the intended receiver. It looked like one ref Terrible. was ready to pull it out of his pocket. Terrible non-call right there. Pulling on his jersey. Unbelievable. Now an interception thrown. And is it going to be a pick six for Severian? Yes. And Severian can thank the referees for that touchdown right there. Anthony Ferrara, the sophomore defensive back, returning that one. And as you said, you can thank the officials for that one. Yep, they blew the call, blew the non-call on the pass play. And Severian took advantage right away. See right here, really wasn't a good pass. Into double coverage and Tejon Glendardi can get up there, but. Tell you what, that was a great interception because he went high for that one. It's a shame when games might be decided by refs if Brockton scored a touchdown, they had a long way to go, but you can always play the what if game. The extra point is up and good. Fourteen to nothing, Severian over Brockton, and it quickly turned from a story of defensive battle to a non-call on clear defensive pass interference that would have given the boxers a fifty-yard gain. Yeah, you just hate to see the kids get uh, beat on a on a non-call. Really playing their hearts out, and that was that could have been a first down. Ten yard penalty for pass interference. Boxers would have had a first and ten. But instead, the next play is a interception and a run back for a touchdown. Now they're down by 14 points with 634 left on the clock. Take a look back at that non-call that could very well end up impacting the final score of that game. There's the pass There's the interference right, right there. there. They're mobbing. They're, oh my God, I can't believe they didn't see. There were two referees right there and they did not call the, call the pass interference. And the Severian sideline probably looked up at the sky and breathed a sigh, a sigh of relief. relief. That no flag was thrown. And we're on home turf. And the referee refused to pull it out of their pocket. Sprockton was really never really completely out of last week's game against BC High. And if you don't include the non-call in the pick six, you could realistically be heading into division play 4-0. Exactly. And if your starting quarterback and top wide receiver weren't injured. And a host of other players suspended. Low snap. And they're going to blow it dead. Is that because the quarterback knee hit the ground? I'm not sure why they called it dead. I didn't see. I thought he just picked it up. Maybe we can see it here on the replay. 
Yes. Yeah, his yes. knee was down. Good call by the officials. One of the few good calls this evening. Although that rule is universally hated. <laughs> Navon Reed leading trips on the far side as Medley in the shotgun. Back to pass, throws it high and he's picked off again. Intended for Adam Olafale, instead finds one of the Severian Hawks and with five minutes left, Severian's going to continue feeding their running backs and this clock's gonna bleed down fairly quickly. Yes, indeed. You can see here, quarterback just doesn't have quite the arm because if he could have got that out there, the receiver was open, he had to come back, but by the time he got back, the ball was in the hands of the um, Zavarian defensive back. Gain of a yard. Generous spot, it'll be second and eight. 4.40 to go and counting as Severian starts to bleed the clock. Five nothing into three. Direct snap and hit by a host of boxers. is number 25, Luke Thorbon. Quarterback keeper. It's Thorbon again. Well, I tell you, the defense does not have to put their heads down this afternoon, excuse me, this evening. They fought valiantly, only giving up one touchdown in the first half. Excuse me, there was, there was nothing, nothing in the first half. It was the third quarter on that initial drive by uh, Zavarian to give up that first touchdown of the game. And, and the refs handed, handed Zavarian yes, the second, second touchdown, touchdown on a silver platter. So uh, defense has not, nothing to be ashamed of this evening. They played a, played a good, solid football game. Without their captain, without exactly. their starting cornerback, exactly. David Belsius. Gave it a good, solid effort. So, Miles, you can only hope for so much next week if uh, Isaiah Laguerre, Michael Norman, Sten Bruno, and Derek Williams can come back. Yeah. Well, but Bruno won't be in there. He's one of the couple suspended for two games, along with Belsius and Watterson. Yeah, the only consolation about next week is it's not Zavarian, it's not BC, it's Durfee, and not putting, putting nothing down on Durfee, but... Brockton has had a pretty successful record over the last 10, 15, 20 years with Durfee. And then like, they got New Bedford at home to wrap up the regular season, yeah. and then they enter the wacky world of MIAA playoffs. And then not to be forgotten, because the game still matters for something, I suppose. Bridgewater Random Trojans here at Marciano on Thanksgiving morning. Ball's out. And I think Severian fell on top of it. 
Brockton's going to call a timeout here with 2.53 to go. It'll be a second and a long seven. We'll call it eight. So Miles, normally the boxers just shrug off the Catholic Conference's three losses because the Catholic Conference is normally that good. This time around, it just it feels different. Yeah. BC High, they were always within one score. And then Watterson's performance with the, uh, the punch that was thrown and all the uh, personal fouls and penalties that Yeah, they were basically, levied. They, they more or less gave that game to BC with their, um, with the unnecessary penalties, a few lapses. And this time around, a ball falls this way, a pass goes that way, a penalty's called when it should be, and well, we said, in the beginning of the second half, we said whoever makes the least mistakes basically will, could come out of here with a win. And basically, so the refs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we never did call the refs into in the play, but the refs did fall into play there in the fourth quarter. Game possibly still could be seven nothing. But if you're the boxers, are you in? Are you encouraged by the performance against the Catholic Conference, or are you kind of kicking yourself a little bit because? BC High was just a sloppy effort. Yeah, but that, you're kicking yourself in that particular game. This game, this game was off. within one score, but you didn't have <coughs> most of your offensive weapons. Yeah. So you can build off of this because the um, substitutes came in and uh, gave it their best shot. Have you seen any performance tonight that when the guys get back from being injured and or suspended, they take their starting jobs as Massey goes down to the six yard line. Probably not, um, but um, those starters got to earn their way back in, uh, into that starting position. What's What should be scary for the big three division is having Tijon Darty Glenn line up opposite Isaiah Laguerre. Yeah, well this guy, big number 44, he's just a bruiser. And when you're in the fourth quarter, you're down by 14 points. It's even tougher to get the big boy down. I mean, that's just the way it is in football games. You're worn down, been battling all day. The other team has a great running game and got some big backs back there. So it's 14 nothing, a buck 45 to go in the fourth quarter. A lackluster offensive effort, really for both teams. Yeah, I mean, um, Zavarian's running game has been off and on, but in the second half, they finally put the running attack together and uh, pushed Brockton around a little bit. Some nice long drives running that football. The direct snap to Massey, who's still trying to reach over the top. He's going to be marked shy. Yeah, nice job by the boxes holding him there on that uh, second down. Now it'll be third down with uh, 105 on the clock. I want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds for him. Marciano Stadium, Friday night lights at the helm. Paul Mandeville, who had a successful week in football squares. Thank you, Adam Vinatieri. Next to him, no particular, I don't, I don't know where anyone is tonight. 
Mike the Postman Simmons as Severian gets across, I believe. Oh, they're going to mark him short again. Nice. So it'll be third and goal. Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. I think he's on instant replay tonight. Excellent job on replay. Ooh, nice job there. Number 32 stuck him right at the line before he could. And the Severian player was more concerned with appealing to the refs that he got across the line instead of putting the explanation point on exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, Aaron T-Bone. Uh, Tebow is somewhere in the truck. Another great job. Up on camera, we have Katia Andrade. The Greek freak, Phil Philippides. Katiana's up there somewhere. Katia's on top of the booth, braving the cold. She's the best. Well, Zavarian shows some class right there and just let the clock run out. They could have tried to punch it in one more time, but the uh, coach for Zavarian realized that uh, there was no need to. And uh, they come out to the middle of the field to shake hands. All the clocks indeed have hit zeros. The final score, 14 to nothing. Only seven of that should be accounted for by the Severian Hawks. Miles, we're looking at a different ball game if they call that pass interference. Brockton's on Severian side of the field with a lot of momentum. We could be looking at a tie game right now. Yeah, exactly, it's just a shame they had to lose that way. But that's just the way the ball bounces sometimes. Brockton falls to two and two on the year. Wins against Lexington and Natick to start off the season. Falling against the Catholic Conference, BC High and Severian. The final score from Marciano Stadium tonight, 14 to nothing. Severian over the undermanned Brockton Boxers. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. We will see you next game.